You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. It's a Ferg Friday with our uh, our good buddy, Justin Ferguson, with the Auburn Observer. And man, even though it's the offseason for football, um, storylines keep uh, keep on moving with Derek Mason officially being announced the D.C. at Oklahoma State after, of course, Auburn promoted Jeff Schmetting to defensive coordinator. But, Jay Ferg, the interesting thing in all of this was the Auburn players quote tweeting that tweet saying, you know, yeah. with quotes like, oh, you know, you told me you were stepping away from football and now you're taking, yep. you know, a similar job somewhere else. That seems out of character for Derek Mason based on, you know, what I've seen from him. Did What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so uh, let me take you back to a couple of weeks ago when I first yeah. started hearing, um, you know, word that Derek Mason would not be Auburn's defense, most likely would not be Auburn's defensive coordinator in, in 2022. The word I heard was there is no job lined up right now. It's, you know, he's he's stepping away, okay. right? And not necessarily stepping away, like getting getting away from coaching, but it was just like there's no job he's immediately jumping to at the moment. Uh, but he's probably not going to be around. Then a couple days later, reports uh, Bruce Feldman, uh, Brandon Marcello, several others reporting that um, Oklahoma State mm -hmm. was making him a candidate, was, was serious, he was a serious candidate at Oklahoma State. That was the first I had heard of a specific team being linked to him. And then Auburn, you know, pushes it. Uh, it was the Friday it starts getting reported with the the, the, the moves last week. So last Friday it was, uh, you know, promoting Jeff Schmetting. Um, you've, uh, uh, you've got Christian Robinson coming in as your linebackers coach. Sure. And you got Jimmy Brumball as your defensive line coach. That started getting reported by uh, people, you know, all across the beat on Friday morning, right. confirmed by Auburn on Saturday. Throughout that whole time, you know, it wasn't the immediate jump, but throughout that whole time, I thought Derek Mason was going to end up at Oklahoma State just right. because it had kind of pushed like that. But apparently there had been some sort of, you know, what I had heard at the beginning of the week that he was stepping away. Apparently that, way, that had been communicated to other people at Auburn as well. So that when the jump was made to Oklahoma State, wasn't surprising for those of us who had who had kind of followed the the coaching carousel, right? Wasn't yeah, right. Surprised to fans, but the players' reactions to it are like, yeah. So it, it does kind of kind of like it seemed very obvious that Derek Mason was not going to be Auburn's defense coordinator. That he was leaving. It was just going to be a matter of if something was going to come up. And to me, the timeline looks like yeah, Oklahoma State ended up being the one. Interesting, yeah, because the way it kind of was unveiled to the public was, hey, Derek Mason. Uh, you know, Oklahoma State's interested, and then you know Auburn promotes Schmetting, and you know Derek Mason pops up at Oklahoma State a few yep. days later. Yeah, but, they got ahead the of it. Side, it was a, it was a different it was it was a different order of things. Is that what you're saying? I, I think it's more of just like you know, it, it was obvious that he wasn't going to come back, so Auburn got ahead of it before he moves. But with what the players are saying, and with what the reaction was from them, it did seem like there it was communicated at some point that. He was stepping away. It wasn't, hey, I'm leaving for the Oklahoma State job. It's like, hey, I'm I'm leaving. And, you know, I don't know what was said in a meeting. I don't know the preferred word, but I just know what the players' reactions were. Um, seems to indicate that uh, th they did not necessarily think that he was jumping to another job, uh, that he was stepping away on his own and, and not necessarily going right back into coaching. So, Interesting. Um, but yeah, it's the the timing, right? It's the reporting yeah. and the you know when it all kind of comes out is is it just makes the timeline really kind of wonky and and Auburn getting ahead of like so like hey because I believe it was you know Derek Mason had resigned I think that was the way Auburn had, had had put it which is true right but you know opportunity pops up uh, with with Oklahoma State and so I think what we're seeing is is that it was all confirmed and all the like Auburn announced the moves and it had it all kind of finalized on saturday right and those two yeah. hires were, were on friday but all this had been kind of in the works earlier it all didn't happen at one time it all just came out at one time and so that's one sure. of uh, one of those things where when you get that going on there's like two parallel timelines mm -hmm. that, that 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 go on and it just one of them looked a lot different than the other one so a lot of folks reached out like when this was coming out that you know he told the players that you know he was stepping away and 
you know, the the football, you know, some of the members of the team were kind of, you know, I don't say lashing out, but maybe calling him out a little bit on socials. People were like, please talk about this. And I'm like, eh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But people are asking about the whole, you know, I, Auburn fans are upset at this. And I guess my question, Justin, is like from an Auburn perspective, like why does this matter anymore? Does it matter anymore? I think it matters to the players. And I think it matters. I think it matters because he was so well liked. And I can see why yeah. players like, but yeah, like the, the, him going to Oklahoma State, like he wasn't going to be Auburn's uh, defensive coordinator in 2022. That had been pretty much established at that point. So, uh, yeah, I think it matters to fans as they're trying to figure out why would anybody leave Auburn to go to Oklahoma State. But, you know, I, I think the guy who knows all the answers to those questions for sure is Derek Mason. And, I, and knowing Derek Mason and knowing, like, I don't think he's going to go, like, air out any dirty laundry as soon as he gets to Stillwater, right? That's just not his style. So I, I don't know if we'll ever know the full, complete, detailed story of it, um, you know, unless we hear it from the people involved specifically. And I just that's just not how it ro- that's not how things roll, really, in, 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 in coaching changes. Do you think that there's a chance that Jeff Schmetting and, you know, Brian Harson's staff could spin this as to, you know, we're here. We're, you know, we're choosing you guys. We're, you know, you know, you can trust us, and we, we've been a part of this program now, you know, since the start of the the Harson era, and you know we're promoting a guy from within who's got your back. I mean, do you do you think there's any of that that matters, or do you? I think, think the, I think the continuity matters. I think yeah. I, I really do. I think the continuity matters because I think Auburn's got a solid defense next season. I think the talent they br- they're bringing back on that side of the ball should make them, you know, a, a pretty good defense. They're going to have to change things. They're going to have to fix some stuff, like like any team, right? But yeah. The fact that you have somebody who knows that team and knows that personnel and and knows what they're coming from, you know, it probably won't be a like for like, hey, we're going to run the same exact stuff. But I would imagine the continuity is going to be important. And and the big thing for Brian Harson, like, it's another one of those moves where, kind of like with the wide receiver coach, kind of like with to an extent with the offense coordinator, um, but like with this is like he's doing it with his guys, right? And and right. we will see if it works out or not in the long term. But you can't deny the man's not going going at it on his own terms and doing it his own way. So I think this is just another example of that, that he already had somebody in place that, you know, could step right up and and, and take that job on. Right. And the Schmetting after Mason was kind of always the plan. I just think maybe Mason leaving Auburn was possibly a year earlier than a lot of folks expected. Probably. But, probably. Yeah. This yeah. was the plan all along, right? I just think it, I just think, yeah, you got to a point where, you know, a second season of this, it just, they weren't seeing eye to eye. You know, it wasn't, it, not everybody was on the same page. And for Auburn to be the best uh, that Auburn can possibly be in 2022, everybody's got to be on the same page. Right. And so I think that makes it, I think that makes it easier for, to, to make a move like this and to make a switch up like, like, like the Auburn has. Right. All right. I want to keep talking about Auburn coaches and their situations with Justin in just a moment, specifically with uh, with Bruce Pearl. A lot of conversation about his contract. But hey, first I want to tell you guys real quick about this awesome app that if you buy gas, you need to download the Get Upside app. It's free on your phone's app store. When you download it, use the promo code SCORE and you're going to get an extra 25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. It's silly. Use Get Upside. You see the cash back get added to your account, and you can take that cash out of that account anytime you want. You can link it right to your bank account. You can link it right to your PayPal account. You can get an e gift card that you can use from the app. Uh, there's so many different ways to get your money that you're earning just by doing something that you do all the time, which is fill up at the pump. So, once again, download the free Get Upside app at your phone's app store and use promo code SCORE. Justin Ferguson with the Auburn Observer. What are folks missing out on if they are not a subscriber to the Observer right now? A lot of basketball. Uh, yeah. Film room earlier this week on um, Walker Kessler and the dunks that he pulled off against Kentucky and just why that worked, why that strategy worked. Um, you know, we have breakdowns of, of every game uh, after the game. Uh, we'll have one Saturday, uh, Saturday early, you know, afternoon, early evening from the, from the Oklahoma game. Um, just breaking down all things Auburn basketball right now, covering a lot of angles. Mailbag out today. Uh, a lot of stuff in there about Bruce Pearl and, and this basketball team, as uh, as one would expect right now. And uh, yeah, AuburnObserver.com, six dollars a month or sixty dollars a year. 
Uh, you people are wanting a lot of basketball where you're giving you a lot of basketball. So that's, that's, that's fine by me. I love doing it. Oh yeah. People can't get enough of it. And so earlier in the week, this tweet comes out from this Dominique Gates dude saying that if Chris Mack is gone as Louisville's head coach, which he has since been fired, that, um, that Louisville would be interested in Bruce Pearl. And there have been reports now that have come out Jay Ferg that, um, Louisville has reached out to the Pearl camp. There's also been reports that have come out since then saying that Auburn is going to talk to Bruce and a contract extension will be in the works. I'm of the mindset that Auburn does not need to be worried about losing Bruce Pearl. Is that too much of a homerish take, Justin? No, no not okay. at all. I, 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 think, I think there is a microscopic chance that he leaves and you would have to royally screw up the situation, right? The, the man has never had more leverage. The Louisville job is added leverage, right? And right. Mar Maryland being open would add more leverage to it. But this man is it, you give Bruce whatever you want. The fan base is desperate for, for Auburn to just do whatever he wants. And according to Justin Lee's report on, uh, on Thursday afternoon, that Auburn is confident that this is going to happen. There, there's, there's comfort within the athletic department. That they're going to be able to get it done to give him an extension that would give him what he wants and also make it so that he would retire at Auburn. You know, like oh, that, like this yes. is like this is going to be it. Like you were going to give him the godfather deal. And it makes sense, right? Because you know, your basketball team has never been in this position. Right. He's making right now he is the seventh highest paid coach in college basketball, um which is a lot. That is a that is a lot. But then keep in mind your your top 3 right now in college basketball are Cal Parry at Kentucky, which is always going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. K at Duke, that's about to go away, um, right. you know, and, and and when they promote from within, it won't be the same contract, obviously. Then Jay Wright at Villanova, you know, guy who definitely deserves that, that kind of money. Sure. Number sense. four, number five are interesting. Number four is Chris Beard at Texas. Now, if you look at Chris Beard's resume compared to Bruce Pearl's, kind of at Auburn and Texas, virtually the same. They went to the same Final Four. They've had the same kind of levels of success. Texas saw him as one of the best coaches in America. They ponied up to get him. Number yep. five? Rick Barnes at Tennessee and at Auburn and at Tennessee, I think the, think the clear edge goes to, goes to Bruce Pearl. So right. I'm thinking you're thinking top five money. Um, you, you, we already know, um, as, as it came out in the, in the board of trustees, uh, details of their next meeting in Montgomery, uh, and I believe it's next week, um, that they are going to build a new basketball gym, you know, <laughs> new facility. They're having to, they're having a new, they're, they're having to change, you know, the practice facility, um, has to be shared with the women's team. And you know, one of them practices in the arena, the other one practices uh, in the practice facility. Then there's volleyball that gets involved in there. And so like right. it, it, it's a it's a scheduling grind and and it's an arms race in, in college basketball like like it is in college football for facilities. So you already know this is going to be in the works. So the the Louisville job is leverage and it's a, and it's and it's pretty good leverage because Louisville's a, a fantastic program. It's they're gonna a good be buying job. right. Yeah they're gonna be buying at the top of the market. So I don't doubt at all that there would be interest from um, Louisville and Bruce Pearl. I do know, though, based on what the man has said and based on what I know about him, Bruce Pearl loves Auburn. He has built a machine here. Yeah. I mean, I said yeah, it on our podcast. He's done the hard part. Right. And I said and I said it on our podcast Thursday, but he might be – it's like him and Nick Saban might be the only two people on the planet, maybe Kirby now at this point that he finally got Georgia there, that has like a 100% approval rating in college sports. He can, the yeah. man can do no wrong. It would take years and years of underperforming for them to even think, yeah, maybe, maybe it's time for us to move on. Like it would take a ton to get to that point. So when you're in that kind of situation, you give the man and his program once because that's what they've done in Alabama. That's what they've done at Georgia. That's what they've done at other places. And I think that's what they're going to do here. Yeah. Earlier in the week when this report came out, I, I forget who I was talking to on the show that week, uh, earlier this week, but I was like, you know, whatever he gets in the offseason, whatever the number amount is, I can't think of one that would be like actually offered where I'm like, yeah, that's that's too high. Like, I, I just it's not my money that's being spent, but it's just like you could not throw a number out there where I'd be like, yeah, that's too much money. Bruce is currently making a little under four million a year, if you believe the, the, the USA database. Okay, Cal's making eight. Uh, Kay's making seven. Uh, Jay Wright's at six, and then you've got five and four and four point seven for for Chris Beard and uh, and and uh, Rick Barnes. So, I mean, like, 
yeah, if you want to pony up and throw him five, give him no, give, give him, him six, seven. give him seven. Like, give like you seven. could, you could get, you give the man whatever, whatever he wants because he has put your program in an elite situation. And it's like, well, you know, does the Auburn job need to be a top five paying job in college basketball? And I would say this: nobody in the last few years has a better record in the SEC than Auburn, and it's right. clear. It's a clear cut advantage, and that and is one of the three or four. Years. That's counting yeah. last year's crappy season. Right. And this is one of the three or four best conferences in college basketball year in and year out. You, you, yep. this is, this is what the money is. And also you're in the sec. You got all that money you got in that TV, the TV deal money is about to jump high. You're not yep. paying your football coach nearly as much as you usually do right now because he's a newer guy and, 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 and you brought him in from the outside. So yeah, man, like, like this, everything's going to, I think is going to end up working out in the end. It would take a catastrophic, catastrophic failure by Auburn's part to not do it. And if that would happen, I think, you know, people would burn down uh Donahue drive. I really do. I think, I think, <laughs> I think it crazy. would be in flames. Like, people, <laughs> people in leadership would be ran out of town. When you can make the, when you can make the argument that Bruce Pearl might be the best hire Auburn, Auburn athletics has ever made. It's like him and Pat die, you know, like, like that, that's, that's what you're talking about right now in terms right. of the impact and the, and the, and the legacy um, that, that you brought to a program. I, I, I think, you know, I, I think whatever the man asked for is not going to be, you know, is not going to be too much of an amount. Let's let's zoom out on the impact of this. You mentioned Louisville being open. You mentioned Maryland being open. Those are two yeah. pretty good basketball jobs. Yep. From an Auburn perspective, if one of those two spots go after Nate Oates, <laughs> that's good for Auburn, right? Yeah, because I think Nate Oates is a phenomenal basketball coach. And I yeah. think they, they're having a tough time this year, and I don't get it. But they've got a killer recruiting class coming in. They play a style that is annoying for every team that runs up against them to play against, kind of like Auburn. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it would, it would be great. The one for Oates, though, is like – I don't again, I'm not going to pretend like I know anything deep about Nate Oates' motivations. The one for Oates that I'm interested in seeing long-term is um, Michigan State. Like, whenever Izzo hangs it up, because he, Mich- he is from Michigan – um, I, I do wonder if, if if Sparty would be a spot where where he would end up going. But like, but yeah, if, if, if Louisville wanted Maryland, him, though, or Louisville, yeah, I mean, if, if Louisville or Maryland want 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 him, um, that would be an interesting run, and it would be interesting to see what Alabama would do because it's a you know Auburn is in a position right now where they're like, we will pay the man whatever he wants to you know keep him around. We're gonna give, we're gonna pay him. Alabama is not in that situation at the moment. Not saying they're gonna run him out of town, but like, it's not like they're it's not like they're bathed in glory at the moment. Um. And it's it's funny because it's so so soon after their awesome season they had last year. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they they lost to Georgia, who stinks. Like they we, we talked about this last week. They are a very bad basketball team. Yep. But then like they've got Baylor tomorrow. We're gonna talk more about the Big Twelve SEC Challenge in a second. But like that's tough. And then like three days after that, they have to go to Auburn, like the the number one team in college basketball. I mean, they've got a tough. St- and then I think they play LSU shortly after that, if I recall correctly. So. Yeah, they, they they're in a, a tough, they're in a, they, got a, they got a tough spot. Yeah, their strength of schedule is going to keep them in like any good races if it comes to the bubble. But like you're going to have to hit a you're going to have to hit a record to to get to that point. So it's it's wild. I I would have never thought this team was would have struggled the way it has this year. Yeah, yeah, me either, me either. Justin Ferguson, our guest on this Ferg Friday. Hey, it's the new year. That means eating healthier is on a lot of people's plans. And the thing that can make that easy is Built Bar. Head over to Built.com. You can check out all of their incredible flavors. They've got something for everyone. If you like your chocolatey peanut butter flavors or if you're into coconut, like an almond joy, they've got things like that. And they also have fruity flavors if you're into that sort of thing. But all of these bars are covered 100% in pure chocolate, but it's good for you. All the bars uh, have around 130 calories less than four grams of sugar, and more than 17 grams of protein. They're a great afternoon snack that keeps you full and keeps you going. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKS15 to get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKS15 at Built.com. Yeah, Justin, as far as the, the, the Big 12 SEC Challenge, Auburn takes on Oklahoma, a team that probably isn't as impressive as we thought they would be going into the season. Um, but still, you know, the fact that it's in Auburn Arena gives me confidence that the Tigers will prevail. But what do we know about this Oklahoma team? 
Top 30 team in college basketball right now. Uh, if you want to compare that to some of the other teams you have in the league at the moment, this is uh, this is like playing a an, an Arkansas or a Mississippi State, uh, maybe an A&M to a, to a degree, yeah. uh, where, where you have in terms of your, your rating. Um, they are Their head coach is Porter Moser, uh, who comes from uh, Loyola Chicago, helped lead, lead them to the Final Four. Uh, I asked Bruce about this on Thursday, about how much playing – Loyola will help them because they run similar systems. You know what you're going to get out of Oklahoma, and you know what you're going to get out of Porter Moser. They're going to play really good defense, one of the, one of the top defenses in college basketball this season. Um, team that turns the ball over a ton on offense. Uh, I think they're still trying to get used to the like high efficiency, you know, kind of pass it around kind of style, extra pass that we saw Loyola do. Uh, but they shoot really well from two point range. Um, have a really high, re- really high effective field goal percentage. They just yeah, have a real problem with taking care of the basketball. Uh, but a good defense, physical defense. They play deep on their bench like Auburn does. Um, it's going to be a tough matchup. Um, I'm not, you know, not sitting here saying Auburn's like in sudden danger of losing. You look at Oklahoma. Their record right now is 13 and seven. They beat a really good West Virginia team by 10 in in Morgantown on Wednesday night. They had lost five out of six. Two of those were Baylor. One of those was was Kansas. Another one was at Texas. Another one was an overtime game to TCU. During that stretch, they beat a really good Iowa State team by 13. They got one of the toughest strength schedules in college basketball. They will not be intimidated by coming to Auburn. They go yeah. through a war every single night in the in the Big 12. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be a game where I think Auburn, back at home, will have to fight and work a little bit more to try to get back on their shooting stroke, get that offense going again. Um, but I, I will I will say the way they like to defend, the way Auburn likes to defend, should give um, Oklahoma some trouble because they have they have gotten bitten by the turnover bug a ton. They are currently 344th in the country in turnover percentage. And to tell wow. you how many that is, uh, there are only as of right now there are only 358 teams in Division One basketball. Nice. Um, so toward the bottom, right? Uh, uh, so the will matchup I think Auburn's defense versus their offense. Auburn coming off a bad offensive game will be interesting to see how they go up against a really tough defense that that, that they run. But I do think slower pace, um, wanting to take high efficiency looks on offense when they can take care of the ball. This is what you saw in the Loyola game. They don't have the same fit of like they don't have the um, as Bruce said they, they don't have the personnel to kind of run all the stuff that they want to run yet. But at Oklahoma, he's inherited some better athletes, and you're going to get it at Loyola. So I think that's going to be an interesting – and that has come out on their defense. They've been able to pick up that defense a lot quicker than I think uh, they have on offense. Yeah, and Zepp talked about Oklahoma's defense when he came on earlier in the week, and he said yeah. that it was impressive how everybody can guard on defense, essentially like one through four, and yep. they're very versatile on the defensive side of the ball. So that, that lines up exactly with what you're saying. But, um, yeah, I mean – Auburn should be able to force a ton of turnovers, though. And if they can score off the turnovers, they should be fine. They had a hard time doing that with against Missouri earlier this week, but surely they should be able to rebound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's the thing in this game that is going to be interesting for me to see. I think this is another interesting Jabari matchup. Um, they've got a, a tough defense. Um, they're a little undersized in their backcourt. Uh, well, I, I'll say this. They're a little undersized at the three and the four compared to what Auburn's going to bring, right? So um, Jabari, I mean, their, their top guy – that plays the power forward position six, six, you know, they got, they got another guy who's six, nine that comes off the bench for him. But uh, yeah, it's like, he's computing performance. Can he be an X factor? We've seen it in games this year when Auburn has gone up against teams that have good defenses, but are a little undersized in the front court. We have seen him and Kessler kind of go back to work and lead the way. I think this is going to be very similar in that one. And you can't expect a dude like him to have as bad of a shooting performance as he did in Missouri again. But you know, Bad shooting, like good shooting, is contagious. When you see your your teammate brick a ton, uh, you're probably going to start doing that as well. And so back at home should be interesting. You mentioned turnovers. Auburn's playing in Auburn Arena. They're going to make life difficult for for Oklahoma's offense because um, they're going to want to play slow and kind of go down. If Auburn cranks up that cranks up that uh, crowd noise and, and gets out in transition. That's not the way Oklahoma wants to play. Oklahoma wants to play a more, you know slow it down, grind it out kind of style. And, and uh, you know, those are some of the teams that have given ha- Auburn a hard time when Auburn isn't hitting. What do you think about the camping out? Will there be camping out this weekend? I think there might be a little bit just because it is a one o'clock game. Right. And it's really, really early for a student to get in line. Um, 
it is an interesting environment again because Friday night is or tonight if you're listening to this on Friday. Friday night right. is um is Auburn Alabama gymnastics. So easy time to go watch gymnastics. Go if you want to go ahead and save your spot in line. That's your that's your time. So I think you might see a little bit of it just because if it's an early game. Um, and, and the fact that, you know, it's going to be a big day for Auburn um, because this is the first time they've had a home game as the number one team in the country, so that atmosphere should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, yeah, well, I was listening to talk radio earlier today, and they are talking about tickets um, being expensive, which that will be the new norm moving forward. Which yep. isn't if, you wanna, if you want to watch this Auburn basketball team play and <laughs> you don't want to spend a lot of money, go watch them on the road wherever it's close to you. They play at Georgia – Next Saturday, Arkansas is a pretty long trip, but then they got they got Florida, they got Tennessee, Mississippi State the rest of the way. Like that's going to be the easiest way to watch yeah. this basketball team this year. You're right. You're right. Hey, one more time, how can folks sign up for everything at the Auburn Observer? And what do they get? Yeah, AuburnObserver.com, six dollars a month, sixty dollars a year, gets you access to all of our uh, stories, uh, mailbags, film rooms, analysis, breakdowns of uh, Auburn basketball and football. Uh, also a couple podcasts a week as well. And when you sign up, everything gets sent to your email inbox. So $6 a month, $60 a year, auburnobserver.com, sign up, and it's all coming to you. Yep, worth every penny. Hey, we'll be back on Monday to recap everything that happened over the weekend right here on Locked On Auburn.